This class is on the topic of selection process. It's one of a number of classes, uh, in fact 10, or 10 videos I should say perhaps, that make up the class for this particular uh, part of the, the module. So it's important that uh, all 10 of these on selection procedure and selection process should be looked at. But uh, in this particular class we're going to look at selection criteria and in order to validate the selection process it's necessary to produce a set of selection criteria which a candidate can be measured against. So the process is not arbitrary, the, pro the process is not discriminatory, uh, it's not just made up. The process should be measured against a set of criteria and these criteria should be articulated, they should be made known also to the candidates. They, they want to know how they're being measured and their, their suitability and, and what aspects of their application failed if they didn't get the job. Uh, what could they do to improve themselves. It's only fair to give them feedback and uh, to explain uh, the whole procedure to them. The selection criteria is mainly presented in a person specification dealing with the characteristics of a suitable candidate. Now the person specification should be uh, should talk about the motivation of the person, their application to the job, their interest in work, their the requirements of the company have in terms of timekeeping or uh, training or uh, willingness to participate in training programs and to be involved in perhaps the life of the company. So the the job, the, sorry, the person specification is a set of notes, it could be a set of points, that indicate who in particular the company are looking for. And the company should try to explain that so that applicants know what they, the company is looking for. There are three formats that uh, can be used. Uh, Alec Rogers has a seven-point plan. These are quite straightforward, by the way. Um, John Monroe Fraser's five-fold framework and Lewis's three aspects of selection criteria. Now, they're very straightforward, uh, quite simple ideas, but we'll run through them for completeness. So we'll start with the Alec Rogers uh, seven-point plan. This provides a basis for the construction of a person specification. So this is the, the part of looking at the personal characteristics, the personal attributes that are particularly desirable uh, in, in terms of job application, what the, the company is looking for. And the company should try and set out clearly what it's looking for. So, as I said, it can make quite an objective selection from amongst the candidates. So the selection criteria is based on meeting essential and desirable criteria. This is what ideally the company is looking for. Now, in some cases it might be looking for physical build. It depends on the nature of the job that, that's been advertised. Uh, if the job involves manual work, then clearly it's, it's only fair that the, the person applying for the job should be physically fit and capable of performing the functions that are a part of, of the work specification. Um, so it's important that the applicants are aware in advance of what they're applying for. So it may be the case that physical build is something that needs to be communicated. Depends on the nature of the work, of course. But for some work where lifting or moving or physical exertion is required, physical build could be an important characteristic. Looking at the achievements of the person, what have they achieved in terms of career or even in, in terms of work in the community? What sort of people are they? What, are, what have they achieved? Uh, it depends on their age, I suppose. It depends on uh, what opportunities they've had to engage in, in work or engage in experiences that would add to their achievements. But nonetheless, they should have an opportunity if they have achieved anything in, of, of note, anything worth noting, they should have a, an opportunity to explain that. Intelligence. Well, it may be 
measured by school results or university results or uh, diploma results or whatever but it may also be uh, simply their ability to handle situations and to work in stressful situations and to work skillfully. Um, after all intelligence is not entirely measured by examination results so we have to be careful when we talk about intelligence. Intelligence, intelligence involves the ability to think and to problem solve and to deal with situations and that might involve all sorts of thinking processes, lateral thinking and thinking around around problems and so care has to be taken here but, but there might be situations in a person's life where they've found themselves in positions where they had to engineer solutions, they had to find solutions, they had to manufacture solutions and they should be given an opportunity perhaps to discuss those in the context of their application. Special attributes. Is there something extra special about the applicant? Uh, can they do things that other people would find difficult? Can they uh, multitask? Can they uh, have they got special computer skills or uh, presentation skills or what can they do exactly? What what are their special attributes? Anything distinguishes them from others. Perhaps they've done something of note in the past. Uh, they could have done some activity for charity or in the local community or they could have traveled widely or what exactly? Uh, give them an opportunity to specify those. What are their interests and hobbies? Um, what do they like to do? It, it may indicate their suitability to the job. If the job is working on uh, the company database and they're interested in computers as a hobby, building computers or whatever, it shows that they are, they're interested in that area. You don't want them at the same time to be entirely focused on databases and computers. They might also have hobbies including football or walking in the hills or cycling or whatever. So you need a balance in terms of lifestyle and recruitment uh, personnel within the business will be looking for a balance, looking for wider interests. Their disposition, how do they present themselves? What do they uh, what do they look like in the sense that are they presentable? Do they represent the company? Do they dress appropriately? Do they um, would they be good representatives of the company if they have to meet clients or they have to uh, go off site and uh, meet the other companies? Are they presentable? Are they well spoken? Are they polite? Um, what did they look tidy? Have they got good personal hygiene? I mean, what is their disposition? Now, you could say that that's bordering on too personal, but it is taken into account. And companies want personnel who represent the business and represent it positively. So they want people who are uh, polite and nice and well-dressed and well-groomed and efficient and presentable and affable and so this position is considered. And the circumstances. Where are the people now? What are they working at? Are they unemployed? Have they been cycling around the world? What have they been doing? What are their circumstances now? Uh, have they finished college? Have they finished school? Um, have they got a disability? Have they broken their leg recently? Or um, are they uh, visually impaired or what, what exactly are their circumstances? It's important that both sides know exactly uh, what their obligations to each other are and be honest and open about their particular circumstances and the company should do the same be honest and open about the circumstances and they should ensure that if 
the applicant has a particular set of circumstances. However, these circumstances will not in any way affect their uh, work, their performance at work, then perhaps they should not be taken into account. But the company might want to know because the company can perhaps make the person's life, working life a little easier, making their environment a little easier. So just have an openness about uh, their particular circumstances. Uh, the five-fold framework, uh, John Munro Fraser's uh, five-fold five framework, well, it's a, it's a more simple approach, or a simpler approach, I suppose I should say. Um, yeah, I think a simpler approach is, is better grammar. The framework focuses on the candidate's career and derives future uh, potential. So it looks, this, this particular route looks at the candidate's career and their potential. Now, what's the impact on others? What does the, this person, this person's presence in the business, how will it impact on others? Will this person be a team player? Will they fit in? Will they be isolated and uh, not cooperate? Uh, what sort of personality type have they got? And how will they affect others in the business? Uh, the last thing the company wants is to employ someone who's going to cause problems within teams and upset the balance. The company has worked hard through training programs and uh, through uh, various activities to try and build teams. Now, implying somebody from the outside who comes in and disrupts that would be very counterproductive. What are the qualifications and experiences gained in the past? Um, what have they achieved in the past? Really, it's the, the combination of qualifications and experience that's important. Um, we learn from our experiences in the same way as we learn uh, at college and at university. So it's important that the, the person who is applying is, in a sense, measured against their qualifications, how well they've done, how well they've applied themselves in the, the study situation, and also what experiences they've got of work, and what do the previous employers think of them, pick up references. What are their innate abilities? What, what can they do easily? What can they, what can they do as, as a part of the package of skills that they've got? Can they simulate information easily? Can they write well and present good written records? Can they use computers efficiently? Can they work machines uh, carefully and accurately? Are they responsible people? Do they like to be on time? Do they like to be well presented? What are their innate abilities? What can they do, in a sense, better than others? And what's their motivation? What drives them? <clears throat> it might be they're driven solely by salary. They, they want to save up and buy a, a nice car or move house or whatever. Uh, make a contribution to the family. That might be their motivation. That's fine. It may also be the motivation that they want to have a good career. They want to have a good job. They want to have security into the future. They, they want to make a contribution. They want to work. They're, they feel active. They need to make a make an effort and have some sort of status in life. Depends. What's their motivation? It's important to know this. And what's their emotional balance and willingness to adjust? How, how do they balance their life? What's the, what's the blend in their life? Their, their family commitments, their hobbies, the sporting activities, their work, uh, their career development, what are they doing? How is it all balanced? Uh, what's their personal plan? And to what extent are they willing to compromise? Compromise because they need to work with others and others have got plans and the plans may be at variance. But to avoid conflict it needs goodwill and it needs cooperation and understanding. Are they willing to, to adjust to others?
So what's their emotional balance? What are what are they like? Are they easily upset? Or are they quite robust and calm and reflective? What are they like as people? What's their plan for themselves? What's their their balance in life as well? What are their commitments? And how does all of this affect them? Do they uh, come across as well-adjusted people? Calm, collected, cognitive, understanding, peaceful? Are they emotional and fiery and quick-tempered and easily upset and moody? Try to get an understanding for that. Lewis implies that selection criteria is dependent on three factors. Now these we don't go into detail because these really depend on the organization to a large extent. So what are the organizational criteria? What's the organization looking for? That's at the organizational level. That's at the company level. And what the company wants are uh, people who are going to enjoy working for them, well motivated, well presented, careful, accurate, keen to build a quality product, be associated with a successful company, uh, efficient, keep good time, uh, people who don't create problems who instead solve problems. So at the organizational level there's a whole set of requirements and these are all very if you like generic. These are widespread requirements. But there's also functional and departmental requirements. Uh, the person will work within a department and the department will have uh, particular requirements over and above the organizational ones. The, the department will want people to complete certain routine tasks and to contribute towards the life of the department and attend departmental meetings perhaps and make contributions and uh, show a willingness to work with others and compromise and and get along and perform efficiently. Be simply be a nice par, uh, person within the department who makes a good contribution and who is trying hard to promote him or herself in terms of career and to have the respect of colleagues. There's also individual job criteria that must be met. When the person is taken on, they are taken on to work on a particular job. Well, that job will have certain requirements. Certain functions must be completed before others. It must be completed with diligence, with care. And the output must be good quality. And uh, the whole process should be done efficiently. And the person needs to apply him or herself to complete the task. So there are different levels of requirements coming down from the organizational, departmental and the individual job. And these need to be specified. So it depends on the nature of the organization, the, the nature of the department and the nature of the particular job that's going to be filled. And these should be specified because that these will constitute the job description. And these should be sent to the applicants so they know what they're applying for and they know then if they should uh, apply or not because that is the information that's been given to them about the the work about the company about the department and they can then self-assess as to whether they should apply or not so this is still a part of the selection process and we've now looked at three different approaches to uh, selection. The um, Rogers, the Monroe Fraser and the, the Lewis. Um, broad categories, nothing too complex, but at the same time very important in the context of the selection process. So let's leave this particular video and as I said at the start, remember there are several other videos. There are ten in total in this particular class. So let's leave this one and say thank you for watching.